Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is the first of a series of lectures on combinatorics. In this introductory lecture, one of two, I will just be telling you what combinatorics is and just giving you a sense of what to expect um, when you study combinatorics. So combinatorics is basically a collection of techniques, attitudes, um, and general principles for solving problems about discrete structures. Unlike other areas of mathematics, combinatorics does have plenty of theory, but it's not a, um, a, a place where we build a huge edifice of a theory and, and then use it, but rather we focus on problem solving. A kind of typical kinds of questions we ask is that we have a set of elements, often finite, but not necessarily, and we wanna ask, does some kind of a specific arrangement, one that we are interested in, exist among those elements or not? If so, how many of those arrangements are there? Counting is a big part of com combinatorics. And what properties do those um, uh, arrangements have? And if there's more than one, um, then which one of those arrangements is maximal or minimal or optimal according to some criteria? Um, uh, this is a very useful area of mathematics. Um, it's, uh, the uh, combinatorial arguments are used almost in every area of uh, other area of mathematics itself. In fact, if you look at um, uh, almost any area of mathematics, after you build the theory and, and work out the details, at the end of the day, your problem or your question will end up being a combinatorial problem for the most part. Not always, but, but, but there's combinatorics almost everywhere. And it's also very useful in other areas, for example, in computer science. In fact, there has been an explosion of combinatorial activity and papers and articles and, and new results and so on because of the fact that, um, because of the synergy with uh, uh, computer science. So now what I wanna do is I wanna give you just a sense of the kinds of problems that you will be able to do after a proper course in combinatorics and after having uh, learned some combinatorics. Some of these problems you, you maybe even can do now by, by, by thinking about them a lot. Some of them you will need uh, some more techniques and some more advanced uh, ways of thinking about things. The thing about combinatorics, the nice thing about combinatorics is that the problems of combinatorics, you can understand even without a course in combinatorics. The problems are very much, um, a lot of them are very easily stated. And uh, you might think that, well, you know, I should be able to solve that problem. Or in fact, anyone uh, should be able to solve that problem. Some of them you can, some of them you cannot. So here we go. So the first problem is that I want to find out sequences of 12 numbers. And I, these numbers are going to be, there's going to be four zeros and eight ones. And I, and I don't want uh, two consecutive zeros. And I want to know how many ways can I do that? So that's a question. So, so try to answer that. Um, four zeros, eight, eight ones, and no consecutive uh, zeros. I mean, you could actually try, I mean, 12 is not that large. Ah, and, and you could try to actually write them all down, but that would not, that would be a brute force method and that would not be the ideal way of doing it. Um, here's another problem. You, you go to a bakery and, and, it's, and, and you wanna get donuts. A box of donuts has a dozen donuts. And, uh, and you wanna know how many different boxes you can buy. Now, what if you want to, uh, so how many different boxes of donuts can you make? And what about if you, uh, if you want uh, every box to have at least one of uh, the eight kinds and then the, re the other four you, you, want, you want to play around with. So, so that's another counting problem. The same bakery has uh, maybe the next day has seven kinds of donuts and you want to get again a dozen, but you don't want no more than three of uh, each, each, each of the donuts. You know, another counting problem. Again, all of these are the kinds of counting problems that by the time... Um, you're done training in combinatorics, you'll be able to do relatively easily. Um, here's yet another one. Determine the number of n-digit numbers with uh, uh, digits uh, odd, with all digits odd, so only using odd digits, like one, three, five, seven, and nine. Um, and you want that one and three, both of them occur a positive even number of times. So you want one and three among your digits. Um, so n has to be at least two so that you can do that. Um, well, at least, uh, even more than that, because you want them um, um, even number of times. So, um, and so, so one and three has to occur, and they have to be even number of uh, ones and even number of uh, 
are threes, and then the rest of the digit can be can be um, fives and sevens and, and nines. And, and so the question is that how many of those are there? Here's another um, counting problem. You've invited uh, 13 guests other than yourself to a dinner party and you have seven circular tables. Um, so, so these are tables that people are gonna sit around. Um, one of the tables is special, is sort of the head table. Um, the other four are identical. Uh, two of the guests are guests of honor and you want to sit at the special table, you want to sit at the special table flanked by the other side by those two. Um, you also want three other people, you don't care who, at that special table and everyone else is gonna be seated um, around uh, the other four tables and the only condition for them is that no table should go empty. No, none of those four tables, well, of course, and also the special tables. And in how many ways can you seat, seat the guests? Now in this problem, when we were talking about circular tables, we also don't really care what seat they sit on, uh, but what we do care about is relative position of people. Like for example, who's sitting to my right, who's sitting to my left, that makes a difference. And so, um, so, so we, we need, we, uh, the actual seats are identical, but uh, the relative position of the guests do matter. So how many ways can you do that? So, so you know, we can, count, we can come up with counting problems that are slightly more complicated. Here's a problem that um, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's also a counting problem, but a different kind of one. Here's a soccer ball. Now, usually a soccer ball, like the, the, the typical soccer ball, there are other kinds, is tiled with 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons. Now, what if I wanna have pentagons and hexagons, but I want different numbers of them. And I still want them to be sort of regular in the sense that at every corner when these shapes come together, I want three of them, or maybe four of them, or maybe two, or maybe five of them. So are, is there any other combination of pentagons and hexagons that's possible? Is somehow 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons set in stone, or can I come up with other kinds? Um, here's another word, another problem, that one that, for example, um, has its roots in, 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 in biology and, and in uh, trying to sequence uh, genes. So let's say that we are to uh, reconstruct a word, and we know that it's made up of letters A, B, C, D, and R. And we don't really know what the word is, but we know we have a frequency table. We know how many times a certain triple occurs. So here's the table. So I know that in this word, there are uh, two places that I see ABR as consecutive letters. And there's one place where I see ACA, two places for BRA and one place for RAC, for example. This is the frequency table of all the triples and no other triple. And so I want to be able to reconstruct that word. And I want to know whether or not um, there's one word or ma many words or no words with these uh, uh, triple frequencies uh, for letters. So this is another combinatorial problem. A set of uh, elements we have, things we have, and we want to know is does this certain arrangement exist? And if so, how many of them? Okay, fine. here's another one. Um, uh, on the island of Logica, we have knights and knaves. Knights always tell the truth. Knaves always lie. So, um, for example, one kind of a problem like th th that could happen in uh, Island of Logica is that you have three people standing on a street corner and person one says only one of us is a knave. Person two says only one of us is a knight. And person three says we are all knaves. Now, this is a sort of a logical puzzle. And, 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 the, and the question would be, can you tell among these people if any of them is a knight or a knave? Um, uh, is that possible to say? Now, so, so again, this is a logical puzzle. That's not combinatorics. What's combinatorics is what I'm going to ask next, is that I want to ask how many puzzles like this are there and how many of them have solutions, how many have unique solutions. So that, that's a counting problem, but, but it's sort of a complicated one because I'm, I'm telling you here's the type of puzzle that I want and I want to know um, how many other puzzles like that there are and I have to... I have to set up the parameters a little bit, be a little bit more detailed about exactly what I mean by this kind of a, a puzzle and, and one can do that. But then how many solutions are there and how many, unique, how many of them have unique solutions? Okay, finally, here's I think the last one. Um, let's say that we have, an, and this could be a bigger problem, I, this is just a proof of concept kind of problem. So let's say that we have a um, network uh, consisting of six equipment and, and, and they do different things. And so we have labeled them differently, X1, X2, Y1, Y2, and Z1 and Z2. Uh, 
each pair of these um, can be linked, but they're not linked directly. They're linked through some other kind of facility, uh, maybe a microwave tower or something. And, uh, and, and these uh, uh, intermediate facilities to connect these uh, uh, communication equipment are expensive. So you don't want that many of them. But uh, the downside is that if you have just one, for example, you could have one and then connect all of them to that. And then everyone would be connected to everyone. The problem with that is that uh, 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 if that uh, uh, intermediate facility fails, then all the connections uh, become inoperative. So, so you want to build some uh, redundancy. So we want to be sure that if one of the intermediate uh, facilities fails, we are okay with some of the links failing, but we have actually some very specific requirements that we want to be met. We want at least uh, one of the X's and one of the Y's to be connected. The X's are sort of the same kind of thing. The Y's are coincide the same kind of thing and the Z's the same. We want one of the X's and one of the Z, Y's be connected. One of the Y's, one of the Z's, one of the Z's and one of the X's. So, um, so even if one uh, 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 facility fails, we still want these connections to happen. And so our question is that what's the minimum number of facilities that we would need and how should the connections be designed? Like who should be connected to what through which facility? Um, and so that when one something fails, uh, those connections uh, um, do not fail. Okay, so this is the end of uh, uh, this mini lecture. In the next one, we, which is also an introductory lecture, we'll talk about what we mean by counting, what kind of answers actually we are going to expect and what kinds of uh, answers would would we like. At the end of each lecture, I will have a, a little picture just so that if the video gets caught up uh, at the end, um, uh, you will see all of it. Uh, this is the end of this lecture.